we'll keep going or we'll <laughs> play one more and then we'll introduce you. So. Hmm? Let's do one more and then I'll see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one do you want? Ooh. There's more. I have a lot of wires here. So <laughs> I'll try to step on them. What do you think we should do? Syncretism? Hmm? Syncretism? Okay. You got something there, Dan?
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Emmett's Place. What's this number? 116, I think. Um, so grateful to have so many friends in the house. We haven't been here in a couple of months. And uh, we're looking forward to a great show on drums. Uh, someone I've known for about 12 years since I moved to New York City. Yeah. And you from New York? Yeah. That's right. He's from, New York, from right here in New York City. He's been in the city forever. He's playing with everyone. And this is just about the first time we played a gig together. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I'm so grateful to have him in the house. One of the great drummers of our time. That's Mr. Charles Gould. Yeah. On the bass, one of the best in the business, one of the best ever on that instrument. Uh, we always remark before the... Uh, be, be, before the show today, we were saying it again that uh, Yasushi's in more bands than anybody else in the entire, I think, world. And, uh, and he shows up to every single gig with no music. He knows everybody's music. And it's such a wi wide range and diverse uh, book, book of music that he knows and knowledge in his head. And uh, he's one of the greatest out there. You already heard him and you see why. From Tokyo, Japan, that's Mr. Yasushi Nakamura. And our very special guest this evening, uh, one of the greatest uh, tenor saxophone players of all time. I think I was about uh, 13 years old. My father took me to the Blue Note. I didn't really know anything about jazz. And there was a tenor, tenor saxophone summit. And he was playing there. And he's one of the, the first sounds I heard in the music that made, made me want to be a jazz musician. And uh, he comes from the city of brotherly love from Philadelphia. And... Uh, what can I say? One of the great uh, me melodists of, of, in the world. Um, just a poet on that instrument. And uh, we're so fortunate to have him in the house. And he's celebrating his 84th birthday this year. The wonderful Mr. Lou Tobacco. I'm almost as old as your father. I think he's two weeks older than me. So how about that? Thank <laughs> you. 
sit as this sit for three seconds. Okay, here we go, folks. I have to talk to the system. I, I plead, please play. You have to talk to these people.
I'm so low tech, I can't even turn the microphone button on. <laughs> anyway, nice to play with these guys, you know? All the young cats. <laughs> yeah, Sushi, I play with a lot. He, he saved me during COVID time, Aww. two years of nothing. And he was living on 105th and Broadway. I live on 94th. Anyway, he and drummer Jason Tiemann would come over about once a week, and we'd try to play, and it was pretty bad at first. I mean, no chops, and anyway, <laughs> it, was a, it was a big help, but when we came out of it, we came out of it okay. Anyway, we we'll always appreciate my man Yasushi, and nice to meet these new people here, and nice to play with Emmett first time. Emmett complained that he told me that he heard I didn't like to play with piano players. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's that, that sounds like a time, one time I was hanging out at Birdland with uh, Tommy Flanagan. And he said, hey man, I, you never invite me to your party. I, we had a yearly party and Ray Bryant used to come to it because he was an old friend from Philly. He was very kind to me as a young person. So he would come over. You invite Ray, you don't invite me. He said, well, I guess it's cool because I never hired you. I only would hire Coltrane or Sonny Rollins. I said, well, same thing with me, man. I wouldn't hire you either. <laughs> I would hire Monk or Bud Powell. So that was my little touche. But uh, the piano player thing is interesting. Cause I've been doing trio since 1967. And so when I play with the piano, I have to change my shit a little bit. I have to, you know, I'm, I'm used to filling everything myself. So now I have to say, wait, don't do that, man. That's stupid. Don't do that. So anyway, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to your lovely abode, even though it's five five floor walk up. No <laughs> and I, I, I told him I can do it, man. You know, I'm only 83. I'll be, you know, I have 
I'm not counting next month. That doesn't count. <laughs> so anyway, nice to see all you nice people coming out here and making us feel, making me feel at home. So thank you, Emmett.
They're all like, they all were different. They weren't like, you know, he didn't write the same tune over and over again, like some people do. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he wrote this uh, for the film Samson and Delilah. He never wrote a Samson tune. I guess there's some kind of sexism there somewhere. But <laughs> he did write Delilah. And, uh, Fortunately, I do have a, I, I did have a second part, and cool, am I cool? Anyway, so we're going to give it a shot. I like to start out my exotica thing. I like to do a little small drum and flute duet. Is that cool? Give the drummer something to do. He gets, he gets bored back there. We're welcoming Mr. James Sarno on trumpet from Sydney, Australia. Thank you. 
Yeah, Lou Tabakin, how about it? James Sarno on the trumpet. We'd like to uh, thank some sponsors this evening. Uh, some people stepped up last minute, and we appreciate it very, very much. Uh, Bob and Pam Adams, uh, Penny and Ray Foote. We have Kathy and Bruce Briggs, and also Stephen uh, Lukes. So thank you so much for making it happen. Uh, it's not easy to put these shows together. Uh, month after month, so we appreciate the support and also appreciate you tuning in all the time and these exist forever on YouTube, so maybe speaking to you from the way past. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we're gonna, oh yeah. You see that? Your drink. <laughs> and we also have our sponsor drink here, Bimble, for all your CBD needs. Oh, it's done. I don't think you need it back. Come on, would you like one? I, I should say something about this too. Is it on? Okay. Is it on? Cool. Anyway, when I was a kid, I was watching a late night TV show. I forgot who was host at that time, and they had a they brought up a philosopher. In those days, you could do stuff like that. This is early television, and the host said, "Well, if I could ask you if you could sum up." your philosophy in a sh couple short sentences. He said, okay, the human condition is you can't win, but you can try. I think that's pretty cool. And so I, year, many years later, I wrote a tune called Chasing the Carrot, which means the same thing. Like you put a carrot in front of a mule or a horse, whatever they do, no matter how fast he goes, he can never catch the carrot. So. We're, all, we're victims of that. I'm sure even Bird felt the same way. I mean, the closer you get to perfection, you, you, you realize how far from perfection you are. So this is a story of this little unpretentious tune with, un, with a pretentious title.
That's James Sarno on the trumpet. James Sarno. Thank you. 
Once a, I don't know if it's me or the reed it's dying. Yeah. Well, baby. We'll find out. Once again, Charles Gould on drums. Give it to him. Yeah, yeah Sushi Nakamura on the bass. Yeah, yeah. Lou Tabakin on tenor saxophone.
Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thanks to all the sponsors once again. Pam and, uh, Pam and Bob Adams, Penny and Ray Foote, Kathy and Bruce Briggs, Steve and Lukes. We appreciate you. We thank you for drinking Bimble here on the stream. And um, we thank Charles Gould on the drums. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the incredible Yasushi Nakamura on bass. <laughs> James Sarno was sitting in on the trumpet. Benny Benack on the trumpet. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we, we dedicate this stream to uh, the wonderful Michael Fumi Ononaye, who helped us get started here. On, on sound, we have uh, Mr. Kelvin Grant. And on video design, the one and only Mr. Alexander Weitz. And uh, this, this week we lost uh, a really important member of the jazz community, especially the jazz education community, uh, Sir Ronald Carter um, from, uh, from, from Chicago, Illinois, one of the great educators, different than Ron Carter. Um, he, uh, he passed away suddenly, and, and we send all the love to his family, to Brian Carter, to, to his entire uh, family and all the students uh, that he touched over the years, and we dedicate the stream uh, to, to to Ronald Carter. So, quick button, or are you good? Quick, one, one little quick something. Oh, you, that's enough. I think we should. I think it's enough. But <laughs> 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 it's enough. I mean. I played a couple of chords with a slow blues. A little blues. Okay. Yeah, Something blues. slow. Yeah. Why not? Okay. <laughs> sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> 